Welcome to making a Stuart model steam plant. This one is part 35, rubbing down the casting filler and painting the boiler end plates and sides, followed by temporarily fitting the steam fittings. In the case of this boiler, it genuinely is a new one. Stuart models have reissued the 504 boiler after many years. In the previous video, I showed the fettling of the castings and the filling of one of the castings. I used JB Weld for this job and 24 hours later the JB Weld is set. Now it's time to rub down the JB Weld so it sits perfectly with the casting. I'm using medium emery cloth for this job to start with. And the rubbing down process did take a lot longer than I'm showing here. I finished off the job using some 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper and now the part looks like this. During this painting sequence I'm sure that some people will write in to tell me that I'm doing it wrong. To be honest, I don't really care. In my life I've done many things, from being a professional musician, to a recording studio proprietor, sound engineer, videographer, computer engineer, quite a lot of things. You've heard the term jack of all trades and master of none. In my case, I'm a jack of all trades and master of quite a few. But unfortunately now, I is well old in it. I've turned my hobby, which is model making, into a small business. On the list of things I've done in my life, I've never really seen the need to become a painter. My painting standard is more than good enough for my requirements. So if you're a really good professional painter, don't bother telling me how to do it. Just sit and watch this paint drying. There is a lot more to this hobby than painting. For instance, I'm going to start cleaning the boiler barrel very shortly. Here I'm trying some brasso wadding, which is fairly ineffective. When the time comes to polish this boiler barrel properly, I will use my polishing spindle with a suitable abrasive and a lot of elbow grease. This box unsurprisingly contains the Stuart 504 boiler sides, a pair of brand new boiler sides and quite a lot of heat insulation material. I don't know why there's so much of this heat insulation material. I'm sure you're not meant to put three each side, but maybe you are, I don't know. I'll put some of this heat insulation material next to my hand and then use a blowtorch to see whether I scream or not. And if the pain is tolerable, one will possibly be okay. In the old days, the 500 series boilers all used asbestos. Well, of course, you can't do that now. As far as I am aware, currently, this heat insulation material is okay. I do believe it to be part of the China clay industry. While I was looking at the side panels, I thought it would be a good idea to give them a light sanding with some emery cloth. This should provide quite a good key for the paint. I'm going to sand them a good bit more than you see on the video, but this is okay for starters. With the stuff I work with, keying is very important. If I don't key the paint, then the paint will fall off. Here I'm in the outside part of the workshop, next to a wide open door, and I'm spraying the inside surfaces. This can is nearly empty and I'm doing the job completely wrong on purpose because this is a tutorial. Just look at all the spots of paint that have fallen from the nozzle on the other piece. Rest assured when I paint the other side I will not do it like this. I will paint each of the panels individually and I will use one new can of paint. I don't mean I will use all of the can of paint but I will use a new can. That way the pressure will be greater. And after I've painted these parts, I will rub them down thoroughly with wet or dry sandpaper. Here's a special treat, and it's in the middle of the video too. It's the paint drying. Time now to turn my attention to the boiler fittings. This is a simple boiler fitting. It's a Stuart Models safety valve. And in this clip, I'm fitting it in the correct hole. There are two holes on the top of these boilers. One is for the steam outlet from the superheater pipe, which is the centre pipe underneath the boiler. This provides very hot steam, which is just what you want for a cast iron model steam engine. You're currently watching me loosely fit the pressure gauge. This is where it's going to be, right in the centre of the boiler. Now it's time to look at the steam outlet tap, and here it is, a brand new one. Complete with a 5 16 by 26 threads per inch stainless steel insert. This needs to be fitted to the tap. And when I fit this part to the tap, I'm using some Loctite 542 to seal it. Here it is, I'm putting plenty on. And that should, in theory, make sure that when I unscrew the tap from the boiler, 
The thread insert will remain with the tap all being well. I don't normally use pliers but here I'm just nipping it up slightly with a pair of pliers without marking it. When I started to screw the tap into the boiler it actually felt tight and I didn't want this to be the case. I decided to clean up the thread by using a 5 16 by 26 threads per inch die. It didn't remove much metal but the tap was a lot better fit in the hole in the bush. I'm going to fit a special steam turret to this tap but here it's pointing in the wrong direction. Once I fitted a copper washer and believe it or not this copper washer was exactly the right thickness the steam tap ended up in the perfect position for the job. This is a PM Research whistle. This will be fitted to the end of the steam turret that I intend to make in the next episode. The whistle needs to be in a vertical position so here I'm using a PM Research cast elbow. I made a couple of quarter by 40 thread adapters and here I'm assembling the part. I used my Barco spanner to tighten the cast elbow into the right position. In amongst all the parts were various water gauges and I just happened to find these two which are the older design and by far the best design because they have inspection plugs so you can poke a piece of wire in should they ever become blocked with lime scale. I've had a good look but I cannot find a check valve with the correct thread. I think I'll buy one of these from Stuart Models. That way the fundamental parts of this boiler will all be genuine Stuart parts. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.